let's talk rhythm guitar. So when you're playing rhythm guitar, uh, your mentality might be uh, what mine was about a year ago, which is play the biggest sounding chord you can, take up a bunch of space, um, and lock in rhythm with the drummer, and parts of that are correct. Uh, if I sit down and I'm playing rhythm guitar and I'm going, I'm gonna take up space, I'm gonna fill that gap that bridges the uh, drum kit, which is your rhythmic content, uh, and like the bass guitar, which is your harmonic content. Um, so I'm kind of filling that in and uh, supporting the vocalist and it all works out really well. But there are other things that you can do. Um, and the big thing that I wanna talk about today is movement within the chords. So instead of that, I'm playing G, C, and D. Uh, instead of that, I can approach those chords in a different way. Um, and instead of playing with a pick, or in this case with my uh, index finger, I'm going to separate those notes out. We don't always have to be playing all of the notes in the chord all of the time. I'm gonna use the same chord shapes, uh, which is your normal bar, bar chord shape for the uh, G chord, uh, which is just an E major shape with these three fingers and the bar kind of, I always tell my students, shortening the guitar essentially. Um, so we're just taking this shape, we're switching our fingers to make it a little more comfortable, and we're moving it up into the G position. And we're doing the same thing on the C chord and the D chord, uh, but we're using an A major shape and a different finger. Um, personally, quick disclaimer, uh, it is always smart to learn how to do uh, your A shape chords with three fingers. Um, I kind of learn them differently uh, and it's affected my playing style. I have a tendency to have a certain way that I play an A chord that allows me to do um, some more melodic things, uh, but it also means that I'm only playing a fragment of the A chord. I'm only playing that and I'm not getting this top note on the E string. Uh, Take that for how you will. It's something that I wish I had learned to do both ways because I've got a very bad or good or set in habit on my A chord. So uh, we've got those three chords. Now, I'm not gonna change the harmonic content uh, this time. What I'm gonna do is change up the rhythmic content, okay? And what I'm gonna do is think about uh, how a keyboard player might play this or um, how I might play this uh, on an acoustic guitar, um, or how I might play this if I were two different musicians. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the first, the root with my thumb, and then I'm gonna play the remainder of the chord with these three fingers. And what I'm gonna do is sound really really simple and it is and what I'm gonna do next is start thinking about how I can change both the rhythm of my thumb and the rhythm of my fingers so if I'm playing that kind of punky rhythm I can uh, make my thumb kind of more similar to the kick drum and my fingers more similar to the snare drum switch that and it just varies what I'm doing I can do the same thing if I'm playing with a pick and it adds so much more to what I'm playing than just going Do I never play what I just played? Of course not. Uh, I kind of think of that as my biggest sound. It's going to take up the most space in the mix, um, as opposed to. They all have their merits. Um, and this is not me saying, throw out your old strumming pattern. Music is cumulative. 
It's just like math class. Once you learn how to subtract, you don't get to forget how to add. Once you learn how to divide, you don't forget how to subtract. You have to build up a set of skills and use them all. This is by no means me saying, throw out your pick, only play finger style. Um, I, for one, use a pick, finger style, thumb picks, all sorts of things in the same gig. Um, likewise, I didn't learn this shape of G and then learn this shape of G and go, oh good, I can throw this one out. And then learn this shape of G and say, oh, I can throw this, this one out. Learn this shape of G. You use all your inversions, you're gonna use all your strumming techniques as well. So, uh, quick recap, um, break down your strumming pattern. Uh, be more rhythmic about it. Think about bridging that gap between the drummer and the bass player. It adds a different kind of movement. Um, so we're also gonna talk uh, in another video, I'm sure, about uh, adding melodic movement, which kind of supports the melody in a different way and is one of my favorite things to do. Um, but here we're adding rhythmic movement. So instead of just you know chugging along and playing uh, eighth notes, we're making sure that we're breaking it up, kind of listening to the drummer, listening to what the bass player is doing, and bridging that gap between uh, harmonic and rhythmic content. Happy playing.